Of all the wonders our Earth has in store, the Aurora Borealis is perhaps the most captivating. A celestial light show resulting from ionized gas at different levels in our atmosphere, its colors range from red, green, and even a bluish purple. Hey, I'm Jay. This is Plasma Channel. Earth's most beautiful phenomenon, unfortunately, is also one of its rarest. Unless you live above 60 degrees latitude, your opportunities to see the aurora, they're pretty limited. But I think there's a way around that. Recently, I got this monster of a plasma globe. Not only do its colors resemble that of the northern lights, but they occur at specific distances from the center, not unlike how different altitudes result in different auroral colors. And just like the real deal, colors are formed through the ionization of different gases. It might be inside of a glass sphere, but you're looking at a device capable of replicating and demonstrating the northern lights right in your own home. Whether a gas is ionized through high voltage or particle collisions, it emits light as a byproduct of the ionization process. Each gas emits a specific spectral range and to our eyes appears a specific color. For example, krypton glows grayish white, neon as a familiar orange glow, xenon a rich bright blue, and mixing xenon with nitrogen creates a diffuse green. In fact, all of us have seen ionized gas in the lower atmosphere. Check this out. The reason why lightning on Earth is a purpley bluish color is because the lower atmosphere is composed of about 78% nitrogen and approximately 21% oxygen. Nitrogen's ionization color is a bright bluish white, and oxygen, one of its ionization colors, is a dim lavender. So those two combined account for most of the color that you see in lightning. But what about the upper atmosphere? Well, that's where the northern lights take place. You see, in the thermosphere, molecules of oxygen and nitrogen are bombarded by radiation and energetic particles from the sun. During strong solar storms, the Earth's magnetic field concentrates and traps this influx of particles towards the poles, resulting in ionized gases. The colors emitted are a product of gas types, concentrations, and intensity of solar storm. This is where it gets really cool. The color red tends to be associated only with intense solar activity, and appears when the solar particles react with oxygen at higher altitudes, generally above 150 miles. The color green is associated with more concentrated oxygen lower down, often between 60 to 150 miles above the Earth, and blue is associated with nitrogen, typically at an altitude of 60 miles or less. This color is seen less frequently and again tends to appear when solar activity is really high. So if you're one of the few that are fortunate enough to actually witness an aurora, the colors you're seeing are visualization of altitude. Pretty wicked. Well, unfortunately, most of us don't get the chance to see an aurora, but as I'm alluding to, there's a tool you can use to simulate it right in your own home. They're the most underrated thing you can buy, plasma globes. Just like an atmosphere, this beast contains a mixture of several gases. The gases present are primarily neon, xenon, and krypton. It's made by a company called Aurora Plasma Design, and it's about 15 inches in diameter, so it's perfect for our purposes. Honestly, when my order arrived, I was really excited and I nearly forgot to set up the camera. The thing was just so huge that when I unboxed it and turned it on, well, I'll let you listen. <laughs> what? Dude, that's just, that's freaking insane. <laughs> what? Turning out the lights, this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. The filaments look like green fire and are red near the tip. Touching the glass results in really angry white arcs, too. Okay, let's break down what's happening in the globe. Keeping in mind the gas is ionized due to high voltage, the filaments are green, indicating what is most likely ionized xenon and trace nitrogen. Tips of the filaments are orange due to ionized neon, and the bright streamers are ionized xenon, neon, and krypton. You'll notice the color changes with increasing distance from the center, not unlike how an aurora's color changes due to altitude. Now the gas is evenly mixed, so why is there separation in color? This took me a second to understand. Well, the color doesn't just come from differences in gas, but also comes from differences in intensity of energy flowing through the gas. Each gas is ionized at different levels of energy, which comes from the center electrode, about 10,000 volts AC. Different gases will glow at different distances due to falling electric field strength as you go away from the central electrode. 
Near the middle, there's enough energy to ignite all three gases, and the electrode glows all three colors. Moving outward, only the green color is expressed due to lower electric field strength. At a certain distance though, the electrons may not be energetic enough to excite the green transitions that you see in the streamers. That's why the tips are reddish orange, because at that distance out from the center, there's only enough energy left to ignite the neon. The bright blue streamers, on the other hand, are the most powerful. They indicate pathways energetic enough to ionize the xenon. Only appearing above a certain threshold of input power, they get intensified when you touch the glass, and that's because touching the glass gives the high voltage a direct path to ground, leading to more current flow. They're analogous to when solar storms are powerful enough to ionize nitrogen in the lower atmosphere. So we can draw a parallel between colors formed in the globe due to electric field strength and colors formed in an aurora due to solar storm intensity and altitude. Since these properties are intrinsic to all plasma globes, you can also use a smaller plasma globe to simulate the process as well, though the colors might not translate over perfectly. This guy is a smaller 8-inch globe by the same company. Now, at full power, it's a bit hard to see the effect, but turning it down, you're able to see the process at work that we've described with the big globe. Being furthest from the electrode, that red plasma is an indication of lowest electric field strength. I know it's not a perfect comparison, but they both use similar concepts in physics, resulting in the same colors and similar states of matter. Plasma. Ultimately, seeing the Northern Lights is something that I've just dreamed about since I was a child. Growing up in Seattle, I can recall probably about a dozen times the local news claimed we'd be able to see it on a special night. Well, it never came far enough south for me to see it. So for now, that's why I'm drawing a parallel between the real thing and my new favorite toy. If you'd like to know where I got that or the, um, the plasma wands, I'll leave a link in the description down below to go check out the company. Um, they're not paying me to promote them. I just think they have really cool products. Hey, thanks for watching. I'd really love to know your thoughts, so leave a comment down below. And if I missed anything important with the science, please don't hesitate to correct me. This video just represents my understanding on the topic. Now, if you'd like to encourage longer, more frequent uploads, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. You'll get early access to all my videos and a couple other small perks. You stay classy, you classy cats.